But the closure of this World Food India 2023 is only apt when we discuss about the subsector called ready to eat, ready to cook. This is a subsector which is a backbone of the processed food industry. This is something that when you think about processed foods is something where innovation is happening. A lot of uh, new products are being introduced by the uh, key industry players and this is where all the action is happening. The panel today is being led by our moderator, Dr. Anand Ramakrishnan, Director NIST. The panelists are Mr. Rohit Java, Managing Director and CEO, Hindustan Unilever, Mr. Samir Jain, President, Mondelez International, Mr. Prashant Perez, MD, Kellogg's, and Mr. Priyanka Rawat, Category Head, Ready to Eat, Foods and Eat. With this, I would invite our moderator, Dr. Anand Ramakrishnan, to set the context and open the panel for a discussion. So please, over to you. Thank you so much, and thank you so much for everyone participating in this uh, panel. Uh, we are all will aware of that Indian food industry growth story. Last 10 years, double-digit growth rate continuously is rising. And not only that, the prediction of $535 billion business in another couple of uh, years' time. And ready-to-eat, ready-to-cook product play the major role in the total business model, especially after the COVID, more than 35% growth rate in ready-to-eat, ready-to-cook processing products have reached out the market. And we have the eminent panelists are there. They can speak more on that. And in this contest, how Indian food industry, especially ready to ready to cook product, what we are bringing to the market, how is the play the critical role into that? First, I will request uh, our uh, Rohit Zawa, sir. As a MD CEO, Hindustan Unilever Limited, and we wanted to know making RTE, RTC, purposeful, sustainable, and science-based system. Please, you have thought about that, sir. Uh, thanks a lot, doctor. Um, uh, good morning, everybody, and thank you for being here. I'm really excited also to be participating in WFI over the last three days. It's uh, quite an epic event. It's our second time here, and it's uh, become bigger in scale. Quite excited to also be uh, here on the third day. So I'll just speak uh, uh, about 10 odd minutes or thereabouts on uh, uh, ready to eat, ready to cook, but mainly more about food processing and how we see that from HUL and how we integrate purpose, sustainability, and science as sort of an approach. But I will first start by a little bit of context because um, I think uh, food processing as a whole, the reason we are here is it's a pretty important uh, driver of the economy, uh, given that it's so closely linked to the agri-economy. And uh, the, the work we all do here in this industry around food processing, whether it's about food safety, shelf life, food waste, uh, value added, uh, uh, the uh, uh, employment opportunities, and food recovery uh, uh, and security is quite important actually for the national agenda. So it's a, we play a big role uh, as uh, components of this ecosystem. I think on food, and especially on ready to eat, ready to cook, uh, what's important is that if you look at the Indian um, uh, change in the economy and the population, the demographics, uh, one of the, uh, and I've come back af after many years uh, back to this country, and two things that struck me the most, one is uh, the level of urbanization and how uh, big cities are getting bigger. In fact, mid-metros, uh, mini-metros is where the growth is, and how families are getting more and more nuclear. Uh, this is a trend that we'll see more and more in the country, which means that time uh, time poor, cash rich, or uh, more uh, working women, more working families means uh, people need solutions. And I believe in that context, uh, uh, food uh, ready to ready to cook plays an important part to simplify, uh, offer convenience uh, to our consumers. So there's a big consumption reason why I think uh, this is an important moment in the history of the, the Indian uh, economy and the market as well. I think there's uh, one big challenge that uh, we all need to face as industry, which is that um, uh, getting processed food that's uh, tasty, convenient, and healthy at the same time is actually a big challenge. And we in HUL actually uh, believe in um, what's good for India is good for HUL, and therefore we want to uh, serve our consumers, everyone, everywhere. Uh, we believe they deserve uh, diverse, nutritious food that doesn't cost the earth. So the aspect of tasty, healthy, and sustainable is essentially at the heart of our approach to uh, food processing. And I want to just speak to a little bit about how we bring this to life in three angles. One is uh, what we call positive nutrition. Second is what we call sustainable sourcing or regenerative farming. 
and a little bit about our purposeful brands uh, at the end. On uh, first, which is positive nutrition, uh, one of the key elements of uh, our uh, approach is about formulation ingredients and uh, science. And I think in this space, uh, it's very important to have food that's optimal, uh, it's tasty, a good texture, has a good nutritional profile. It's not easy to bring all of these three things together. And we are uh, benefited by the fact that we have uh, strong R&D in the country. We have a very good consumer intimacy uh, capability with what we call Agile Innovation Hub. So we're able to uh, use science to address uh, important uh, needs of the country. And I want to just give you an example of uh, our science-based range in Holix called, called PLUS, and to give you an example of how we bring the aspect of science of formulation into play. Uh, if you look at the women's health in the country, a third of the women have uh, osteoporosis issues. So bone health is quite critical. It's an important need in the country. If you look at diabetes as a problem, in 2045, something like 135 million people in the country might have diabetes. And if you look at just the fact that 80% of uh, uh, India is protein deficient. So we believe that uh, we as an industry can actually address these massive societal functional health needs through products that are not just uh, a nutritious uh, science paid but also uh, tasty. And we've done that through, uh, for instance, in the case of diabetes, we use fiber, a unique technology to manage uh, blood sugar, uh, to control diabetes. At the same time, we have sweetener tools to make sure that the product is nice and palatable. So that's how we bring all of the aspect of uh, science and health into the game. We also have uh, uh, what we call Unilever science-based uh, standards, where we try and reduce the uh, uh, elements of concern like uh, sugar, salt, saturated fat, etc., and increase positive nutritional stuff like fruits, vegetables, whole grain, and nutrients like um, uh, protein, fiber, omega-3 fatty acids, and the like. So, and also superfoods. So this ex uh, balancing of reducing the elements and uh, nutrients of concern, increasing positive nutrients is really a skill that comes with, uh, with some experience which we are happy about. An example is um, the Millet Chocolate Holix. And please do visit our stall there in Holix in hall number five. And it's really a product that has been taste created with uh, uh, three multiple millets. It has got, um, uh, uh, it's got patented technology and therefore it has good taste. Uh, no residue, and the source of uh, calcium, iron, protein, and uh, fiber. And it's hard to do, to create a product that kids like, it's good for them, uh, and chocolate helps, and the fact that you can actually uh, offer a millet, a superfood, that is also easy to uh, process, and easy to actually serve. Secondly, on the sustainability aspect, so I spoke about the science of formulation. The second aspect is about regenerative farming. And if you look at food, when we build food, in our industry, there are lots of uh, issues like um, packaging waste or energy consumption or emissions when we transport food from place to place, uh, water. So how do we actually address all of this and important responsibilities we as companies also have? And we've been working uh, in many aspects of value chain, for instance, uh, on plastic and on uh, emissions by local sourcing, et cetera, to make sure that the sustainability footprint of our food is, is good. Now here I want to uh, give you an example of tomato, which is a product we put in our ketchups. We are working very closely with, uh, for our main crops like tomato, tea, chicory, uh, and milk. Uh, we work with farmers, more like 125,000 across the country, but specifically on uh, regional farming in tomato. So we have an exhibition in hall number 14 that shows you how we are now working with Sehadri Farms in Maharashtra. It's a public-private partnership. We source 80% of our tomatoes from them. Uh, we've uh, worked with them to create uh, good practices of sustainable agriculture. How actually, and I was fascinated when I learned more about that, that the soil actually, over a period of time, through ex excessive chemicals, loses its ability to yield. So, uh, and over a period, period of time, if you do nothing, that soil will become barren. So we have to, it's in the interest of the farmers to keep the soil alive and use the microbes in the soil to effectively create the nutrients that go back into tomatoes that generates wholesome tomatoes, which we can use in the products, and also makes the soil uh, high yielding, and we can offer the farmer the right price because we uh, don't have any middlemen, we're sourcing locally. It's a great example, I believe, of, uh, of what all companies like ours should do, 
when it comes to creating a full value chain that benefits the producers all the way to the consumers and of course the industry. I want to close with the final point on purpose. Uh, and big brands have a responsibility to also send the right message. So a brand called Boost uh, uh, does promote women's cricket and healthy and energy. And we, Hamanpreet Kaur is, is our brand ambassador. We have also invested in scholarships, scholarships in women's cricket in an academy called Coaching Beyond with Ravi Shastri, etc. And I know since World Cup is in the air, that would be a great example to give. And on Holix, uh, we use our rural entrepreneurs to spread the message of nutrition through Mera Portion, Mera Gaon. And these women entrepreneurs, we have 200,000 of them in uh, villages in that is 80% of the rural economy. And uh, these women, and I met at least one, who is, uh, it's an amazing thing. And these women are like entrepreneurs, they build businesses, they sell actual products, but are also the beacon of change in their communities. So they go around uh, to the ecosystem, uh, around the villages around them, and teach women how to be, uh, you know, bring kids more nutritiously and good practices. But importantly, they have become sort of the social leaders, thought leaders. And I thought that was quite a powerful way of uh, when business can actually do well and also do good. Uh, and that was quite exciting. So in sum, what I've just said in the last 10 odd minutes is basically that uh, food processing has a great important role in the economy. Second, that uh, we have a responsibility to also address the unbalanced nutrition of the country because with food, Indians really do not get enough uh, fat, protein, uh, and calories and nutrients. So we as a comp as an industry can actually help that. But to do that, we need to have three things in mind. Uh, positive nutrition, so taste and health. Uh, sustainable sourcing, so full ecosystems. And finally, big brands have responsibility to also do good. Uh, to uh, make the community stronger. So that is what I wanted to say today, and I hope that was of use. And uh, Dr. Oju. Thank you. Thank you, Prajit. A big round of applause to his thoughts. He has given very clearly the total uh, spectrum of uh, ready to eat, ready to cook product, especially on the what that Unilever has, uh, does it on that angle. If you look at another way of looking at the ready to, ready to cook products, India's, uh, if you look at uh, our uh, population, we are the diabetic uh, leading population and also cardiovascular disease. If you take it uh, on an average of our uh, anemic in our country, almost 50%. Our children are more than 57%. Well, how to address this one? One is that only fortification of micronutrient is the best way to address it. We have done it with the salt. Iodine we have added in the salt. It has done very well. Can we do it in the other way around? I iron and other things can be added into the food vehicles. That's what idea to the fortification of that. But two things is coming. One is that is it we are giving over nutrition to them or we are really we are giving additional nutrition to them. That is the two question marks has come to the fortification in front. That's what government of India 2019 our honorable prime minister announced. We have to add that fortify rice to be mixed with the existing system. We are adding the three nutrients, say vitamin B12, iron and uh, folic acid. But is it enough? Or how we are going to do that? What are the processing problem when we are adding the nutrient to that? The processing conditions can change the nutritional bioavailability or not, and how much input and output and how it observes in our body. That's what we need to look into that. Maybe now I request uh, present uh, uh, MD Kellogg's India can address this uh, fortification issues in the Indian food processing sector, please. Thank you. Thank you so much, doctor. And really lovely to your all the wonderful thoughts from Rohit as well, uh, things that I will resonate and probably build on as I talk a little bit about fortification. So let me first take a step back. Uh, I always, uh, I represent Kellogg, uh, a brand that's 116 years old and I often refer to it as the first plant-based nutrition company. Uh, it's a, a brand that has really believed in plant-based and grain-based nutrition for many, many years. In fact, Kellogg has been doing fortification of its products for over 70 years and ever since its inception in India, uh, more than 25 years back, uh, fortification has been part of what we've done and many of you all will remember Iron Shakti is what we always spoke about. So building on what doctor said, uh, a very core part of what we do and what we believe in. Uh, but let me take a step back. Why is this so important? So we've often heard that India suffers from a two-pronged problem. Actually, it's a three-pronged problem. We have the problem of malnutrition, but it's in three forms. One is, of course, stunting, stifled growth, and that is due to 
less availability of the right kind of nutrition. The second one is hidden hunger, right? That is because of micronutrient deficiencies. And the third one, of course, which is becoming more prevalent over time is over uh, nutrition, which is leading to obesity and various other non-communicable uh, communicable diseases, whether it's diabetes, we've spoken about it, heart issues, plenty of them. The one I'll double click on is hidden hunger, right? And micronutrient deficiencies. Like Dr. just said, the statistics are actually quite alarming. More than 50% of children uh, surveyed, and this is the National uh, Family Health Survey of 2019-2021, uh, it's almost 57% showed out as anemic, right? If you look at the comprehensive nutrition survey that was done of kids, anywhere between 19 to 60 plus percent are lacking in some kind of vitamin or the other. It could be vitamin A, could be vitamin B, uh, vitamin D. So when you take a step back, you say that there is definitely going to be a role for food and definitely processed foods to play a role to address this concern. Uh, greatest example that we have is the way that the government worked with industry and tackled the issue of iodine deficiency. We all know about it. Iodized salt is now the norm. It is the only way you can consume salt, and we've really addressed this issue. If you look at what Kellogg has done, and I'll share our experience from other countries, because Kellogg recognized very early that we are all about the power of grains, all about the energy that grains can give you, but we also wanted to make sure that the, something like vitamin B, in all its various forms, B1, B2, B3, folic, B12, is also available in our breakfast cereals. And in countries more developed than us now, but in countries where breakfast cereal, which has been fortified as a stable part of the diet, we find that there is a marked improvement in the availability and the presence of vitamin B when those countries have been surveyed. So it's a very good example that you can make a difference. If you have the technology, you can make food which is still great tasting, has meets all the nutritional requirements, you can make a big difference to the society at large. So we've been doing this, we've been fortifying our products right from the beginning, as I said, whether it goes with iron, with various vitamins and amino nutrients that we have in India. And my urge is for us to continue to work together. It's, a, it's an evolving space, it's a space where you, know, you learn more, the more you do, the more you learn. Bioavailability is a big issue, right? So it's one thing to put it in, but it's the other thing that can it be put in in a way that the body can absorb and get the best out of it. Also, the point is, which products do we do it in, which ones, and the government has taken some very good steps to nominate certain categories, whether it's wheat, rice, oil, salt, as carriers of some kind of nutrition, and then others like cereals, which is, as I said, a staple product meant to be the way you start your day, uh, as also one of those possible carriers, and we are very happy to play our role. Uh, our entire range is fortified, and we also make sure that it is split, you know, just like Rohit spoke about how there are specific needs for women. We've looked at whether it's kids, then it needs some additional fortification of calcium and zinc over and above what we provide in conflicts. We provide something additional in our kids' range, right? And I think when you put it all together, uh, the industry is looking for that direction from the government uh, on which, which food products can go in which direction. But more importantly, I think we are moving into an era where India is definitely opening its eyes to nutrition, right? The need for nourishment and nutrition is becoming more and more prevalent in the country. Consumers are willing to listen. We're seeing the kind of traction that new foods and superfoods, like we call them, like millets, is making in the country. And I think we can come together as an industry and make a positive change uh, with fortification as well. Yeah? So that's what I want to say. Thank you. Thanks, Dr. Thank you so much, uh, Prasad. See, we heard from the Rohit to Prasad about uh, ready to eat, ready to cook product and the fortification. But when it reaches the consumers, it passes through the so many phases. One is the digitalization in the food sector itself. Because after uh, AIML has come into the play, the digitalization is going very, very rapid phase. One is the traceability. We can use the blockchain mechanism to traceable. When the food is coming to, our uh, food product is coming to your table, just scan the QR code. You know that who is the former is uh, cultivated, which time is cultivated, when is it transmitted, and who has done, and where is the trading. Everything you can know yourself. That is the way we are looking into the future of the food technologies and future of the market is going on. What are the tools we can use to make this is the most sustainable manner? I request uh, Samit Jain, president of Mondelez, can explain about 
about that along with that a how you adapted in your industry also you can touch upon that thank you sir please go thanks doc um, i think uh, just to uh, talk about mondelez little bit first i think we are in this country for 75 years and had the privilege of introducing the unique taste of chocolate uh, in india i think we are still known more by uh, the brand names which we have which is i think cadbury is the dairy milk silk uh, gems and nutties you know and many people still don't know mondelez as a company but a brand names really talk about uh, it we are in the business of getting happiness into people's life i think uh, whether you are sad or whether you are happy i think a chocolate really uplifts the mood of the people and it's pretty much uh, endorsed in a campaign which says uh, kuch acha ho jaye and kuch meetha ho jaye you know so over the years this is what uh, we have been bringing to the consumers i think just to talk briefly first is uh, talk about a journey a journey is really driven by a purpose a very strong purpose which is have which is to empower people to snack the right way uh, which means basically building a snacking world uh, which which is good for people Uh, kind to the planet uh, and is deliciously fun for everybody out there now what does really snacking right mean snacking right means that right snack for the right moment uh, and made the right way right snack means we have a huge bouquet of products right from indulgent to wholesome uh, so it's not only about uh, it's also about nutrition it's also about balanced with the also desire to indulge so this this is all about the right snack uh, right moment being being with the consumers uh, at every occasion Uh, and both emotionally and physically uh, and the right way uh, is basically ensuring that it's made in the sustainable way and employing good practices and to just this is the point which i think we were talking about uh, we owe to the society so we have a huge program around coco life uh, where we work with the farmers to ensure that they have a living wage and this is across the world it's not only about india it's across the entire world uh, no child labor on the farms um, make good practices at the plants uh, in one of our plants in south in shri city 54% of the workers actually are women employees you know and this is really uh, industry uh, standards out there and these are women who are basically just passed from 12th girls basically just passed from 12th standard and how they have come into the workforce and when you go and listen to their stories it's really emotionally uh, touching when you go and listen to them as to how working in a plant has really changed their lives uh, coming on to the whole thing around technology uh, i think technology today is all encompassing digital right from uh the way we design a products right from r&d to manufacturing uh, to distribution sales and and marketing and i'll talk some bits of it in the r&d we have a big center in thana and uh, where in bombay where basically we have now virtual reality uh, to experience uh, to have consumers experience our products uh, no longer we have to go to people's homes and you know to uh, test our products so it's all using augmented reality and virtual reality i was at the center recently you have this headsets out there uh and you, it's really a, at a different level which we have been using this uh, in the in the design of our products uh, in manufacturing uh, i think uh, if we look at the manufacturing lines they are running at a speed of almost 1200 tablets a minute so we have image recognition out there which can sense any small defect in packaging or any small underweight you're talking about a 10 gram product or 13.2 grams to be precise even a small variation in the grammage the uh, the whole system senses it and throws it out of the packaging line Uh, the warehouse we have in the factory is a dark warehouse uh, manned by drones out there uh, so the stock goes inside uh, you uh, you order basically what has to be going to a truck and the stock comes out automatically to be loaded from the pallets to the trucks out there so absolute state of the art manufacturing distribution our products are very sensitive to temperatures you know so we are monitoring now the temperatures right through a cold chain from manufacturing to distribution so at any stage if the temperature drops uh, below recommended one we have, the system uh, automatically throws alerts on that that there's a there's some problem in the supply chain distribution is at the heart of any cpg company and i think uh, covering most stores uh, is one of the mantras for every cpg company and that's true for us also now how do we identify which stores to cover and where to cover in india if you look at we're talking about 600000 villages to go that's physically impossible in a very short span of time to cover all these villages so how do we prioritize so we are basically using technology to determine which villages to first go and these are on the on the parameters of uh economic prosperity on uh, vehicular traffic on social development on all this basis we prioritize which villages to go in urban centers using uh, traffic data and all to which stores to go using uh, google map map my india and other service providers so there's a big role out to play once you reach into a store you know our products are put into visi coolers so again there it starts from scanning of a cooler using uh, image recognition via small handheld device which is say mobile phone you can scan the entire refrigerator and it tells you basically which stuff is not kept properly out there and we are going to move to scenario where eventually even what to place the order for the for the visi cooler comes from the image recognition out there so we were working on technologies out there uh, what to sell into i think which is done by a lot of cpg companies is using technology to determine 
uh, what's the right stocking patterns uh, uh, so that it's the right stock at the right time in the outlet. And then the last piece is the entire marketing piece where we're using the uh, huge level of AIML. You must have seen some of the ads last year for Shah Rukh Khan, uh, which is buying from a neighborhood stores, you know. This was delivered at scale. So basically technology deployed at scale. It's very easy to deploy technology and AIML in a small mall where you know you see a lot of the augmented stuff out there. But our mantra has been to use technology to deploy at scale. So basically, uh, one was Shah Rukh Khan last year. Uh, this year again, we have taken it to a next level with the, I don't know how many of you have tried the Cadbury uh, celebration, birthday celebration song. Uh, so no, it's a, you tried it, that's great to see some nods out there. Uh, please do try it if you're not done, go to the website out there. It's basically, you've been used to hearing, you know, happy birthday, happy, this one song, you know, happy birthday to you, you know, this is like, this is not personalized. Today you can make a, a set of lyrics, this is the interest of the person, how you describe a person, go to a website in 60 seconds, a customized song is dished out to you, which you can then share on the WhatsApp or on the email with your uh, loved ones out there. And in a matter of time, we have now have more than a million personalized songs in the last two months being created by the consumer. So basically, again, empathy uh, and all delivered at scale uh, is where the mantra has been. So the technology, as I was telling earlier, is basically right from all elements. Sometimes you think that technology is only a limited aspect, but manufacturing today and food today, and uh, it's, it's basically industry today is using technology and digital right from the end to end. Uh, and this is also important in the context of tracing of products now. So for example, if something has, uh, has to be rec recalled back, uh, how your packs are labeled should be making for easy recall from the marketplace. I think that's the next step. Uh, which we are taking forward. So I think these are, the, these are the things which we have been doing. I think we are really excited to be in this industry. We believe, do believe that uh, the future of the country uh, for this industry is really bright and we are seeing strong growth. And given the momentum which is there uh, and the entire changing demographics, the income profile of consumers, uh, the convenience which a consumer is seeking today, nuclear families, all this lends very nicely to the growth of this industry. So hopefully a good uh, flavor we have given you of the technology aspect of the industry. Thank you, Sami. <laughs> If you look at a uh, market scenario of a ready to eat, ready to cook product, in Indian market is urban and rural and is uh, penetrated. This uh, food product, if you go to small village also, you can see the packet of chips or biscuits everywhere now penetrated like anything. So we like to hear more from uh, Priyanka Rawat from the category head ready to eat uh, uh, division, foods and ink. Please, you can explain current uh, landscape and opportunities. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Uh, and good afternoon, all of you present here. Yeah, ready to eat is a segment which is fastest growing segment in India because of its convenience, a food which is ready to eat and ready for the immediate consumption without doing any pre-processing and any work at home. So basically, we Food Science started with one factory, one product and one customer. Our product was spray dried egg powder, which we started in 1967 and we were supplying to Indian Alliance during World War II. So then after we shifted the entire business into fruit and vegetable segment, where we get into different fru frozen fruits, uh, thermally processed fruits and vegetables and uh, different type of products like aseptic technology in India. And now we are getting into Tetra Ricard, which is something very different and powered by Tetra Pak. And this is the first project we bought is uh, in South Asian market. The reason behind this was uh, my basic background is related to RT since long years and uh, during my work I have observed that people are facing with some taste concerns with the products which is being thermally processed in different formats since we are also doing the cans and pouches in our facilities. So to eradicate this concern we bought into Tetra Ricard uh, which is literally very sustainable in terms of packaging it is being sourced from uh, sustainable sources and this is the world first FSE certified carton. Since till now we were able to see beverages and milk in, in Tetra Pak and now you can see ready to eat meals, soups, curries, gravies, pet foods, baby foods all in that format. There you cannot find any thermal load in the process and uh, this is also helping us to handle the product, carry the product because uh, the can uh, which is very heavy in weight and the Ricard is having very less weight and uh, transportation uh, which is a big challenge for us can be recreated through this pro process and technology. So ready to eat technology is basically a very fastest going and the products are being convenient for people's changing their preferences like people are very conscious for the health concerns, they do not want any junk in the food. To, so the, this, is the this is the place where we can play and we can irrigate we can remove the concerns of the peoples which is very, uh, which is unethical. I mean, uh, we need to provide the food which is junk free for India. 
because health is ultimately concern and we need to make sure that food what we are providing to the peoples should be free from any kind of junk or any kind of preservatives so we are working in that segment and uh, we are definitely seeing the growth more growth in this segment because there is a lot of opportunities we can see is uh, we need to develop new products we need to do innovations to provide healthy products to the consumers uh, uh developing new product range in terms of which is not yet available in ready to eat format need to be done so that people should not have junk food in different formats so this is all where we can play and make this sector more growing thank you yeah thank you rahul now we'll go for another two rounds one is the issues faced by the ready to eat ready to cook product then the opportunities in that concern one if you look at the issues mainly ready to eat ready to cook product is a packaging is how attractive a packaging most of the products sold in the supermarkets and all how where you keep it in your product shelves and what is the color and color is depends on the personal choice and how is the designing of the packaging everything is coming to the place second one is the labeling the claim after 2018 regulations fss said the claim should be validated lot of claims has been raised but how you are going to issue that one and then all the regulatory issue along with the supply chain the call back whatever jain has mentioned report that if it something happen in the product the it reaches the consumers at the last level of the marketing chain how to call back in an indian system so these are the issues faced by that i request uh, from the rohit sir anyone are not limiting to this any of the issues faced by the ready to ready to cook product segment i think the challenge of um, finding the right balance of taste and uh, health or nutrition is a tricky one because um, you need to make foods palatable at the same time uh, you need to make sure that they're nutritious and um, and this is going to be this is an important uh, work stream that takes time so i think we just as an industry need to have patience that we have to keep reducing the elements or nutrients of concern over a period of time like salt sugar etc and every year we should get better as we do in, in hul we have now have uh, more than a third of our servings uh, are what they call have positive nutrition which means things like uh, good nutrients or uh, superfoods and that has been increasing uh, quite so but it will take time for us to get to the sort of the the uh, the ideal so i think this journey it's a journey and not really a destination we should have more patience but all of us must continue to work towards creating that great optimality between uh, taste and nutrition and with the very very uh, with no harmful uh, I- impacts t- uh, to the consumer prasant not only limiting to fortification the whole segment please no i think uh, like you said for a nutrition out mm. set of products right uh, what we would love to see is a lot more partnership and support uh, i keep making this point that uh, you know we have a very we are seen unfortunately if i take breakfast cereals as a category as a little bit of a high and premium and category where it shouldn't be uh from a taxation point of view from a support point of view because actually it's meant to be an everyday food uh and if we can get that support there is a lot that this category can do for consumers it's convenient you know we spoke about uh, convenience a little bit earlier uh just a bit of a statistics almost 40% of people when we've done a survey uh actually skip or skimp on breakfast which means they either not having it so kids are running off everybody's in a hurry in the morning or they having something that's suboptimal and when i spoke about the three kinds of new nu- um, malnutrition uh skipping and skimping definitely is not the right thing to do so we play a big role over there and actually one of the things we always encourage even more than just our category is saying start your day with kick start your day with the right breakfast and of course we do believe that kellogg's is absolutely the best breakfast to have but it's about supporting and supporting some of these causes which actually lead to proper nutrition for the community at large so i think that's one area of uh, big support and i think if regulators can work with us to simplify regulations simplify uh, claims so that the right claims can get to consumers uh, and also not have so many changes you know which keep on causing problems to the industry that always helps yeah that we do understand but other side of it lot of compliances have come we have to go with the codex what time to time they are changing we also has to change in our indian scenario thank you so much uh, samit jain anything yeah, yeah. which are the challenges we have i think if i look at from our industry perspective i think one of the biggest challenges is uh, getting a proper cold chain in the system so unlike the western world where the retail environment is very sanitized it's all uh, uh, cold chain uh, it's modern trade led 
India is still a very traditional trade-led market, you know, where uh, there's almost nine and a half million mom and pop stores, uh, which form the backbone of the Indian retail industry. And modern trade and e-commerce is a very small portion still at about 20 odd percent. Now, our products typically, and most of the products in, uh, will also need uh, a temperature stability as they travel through the cold chain. So we're able to ensure that when they move from a manufacturing setup till the uh, warehouse to a distributor is all cold chain control. Uh, if we really have to make our products widely available to the entire length and breadth of the country, we need to ensure that there's a, a, a good amount of cold chain which exists. It's expensive to develop the cold chain. We have been investing over the last many years into this uh, in this area. Uh, but that still limits the reach of our products. So I think one of the things is that uh, how do we accelerate the cold chain in the retail environment uh, and whether we can jointly participate in some effort from the government side or something is, it will be interesting. Um, so I think that's, that's the single biggest, uh, I think I can say, apart from what Rohit and Prashant have already said. Thank you. Ravat? Yeah. So the challenges, as Sami said, uh, distribution channel and supply chain is a big, uh, big concern because uh, it's a big complex problem in India still. We can't able to reach to the place with, uh, like we are also into frozen foods and we also face those challenges because of the temperature drops. Once, since I can give you one example, if once a frozen food gets thawed, it will be of no use and in case during the supply chain it gets refreeze it will incur a lot of microflora on that and which is not good for the health. Second thing, uh, then coming to the health consciousness. That is also a big challenge because it's still in India, we can see there are products being sold with sodium benzoate, which is a very carcinogenic and need to be avoided like all developed country has evaded that particularly like Europe and uh, still there are more countries are getting into that. So we also need to work on bring new technologies to avoid these concerns and provide the junk free food to the India. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. If you look at uh, government support, what uh, Prasant has said, already the Ministry of Food Processing has taken a lot of initiation. One is the PMFME scheme has been gone to the MSME sector. Already we, we distributed even day in inaugural session also. You could have seen that self-help groups got more than 350 crore of rupees per head as a 40,000 rupees to, uh, toll money. And PLI scheme introduced, including the ready-to-eat, ready-to-cook product, and we included millet can be added into the existing product from the 10% to 50%. If we add, again, you can come under the PLI scheme. That scheme is really doing well. A lot of Indian companies got benefited. But even if you wanted to showcase your product in the outside market, you can 50 crore straight away they are giving Ministry of Food Processing. Everything has to be climbed. It. But government is uh, supporting the quite well in that area. But present scenario, if you look at the market, is $500 million business of ready to, ready to cook product is predicted more than 2,500 million market in uh, 2030. They know well, aware of that, how the market is. Where are the opportunities for, especially for the medium and small scale industry, including the large industry in Indian scenario, sir? Rohit? The fundamental issue in India, as I was saying in the beginning, is that uh, we have unbalanced nutrition as a society. Uh, whether it's uh, our carbohydrate consumption is lower than uh, standard, our fat consumption is lower than standard, protein, and same for uh, micronutrients. So at one level, we can create products that are tasty to eat or uh, delightful or indulgent. We do that. But the real main spine of the food processing industry should be to lift the quality of diet uh, by science and uh, technology and with all of the aspects of supply chain. So consumers get the value add uh, where their diets could be better without compromising taste. So I think that is where uh, we should get the highest amount of support, uh, whichever scheme is appropriate for, uh, for that purpose. Yeah, yeah I think, uh, you know, one of the things that I didn't mention earlier when I spoke about micronutrient deficiencies is that when I say numbers like 50%, you'll realize that it's not only, uh, you know, a rural urban kind of a split or a higher SEC versus low SEC split. It actually is deficiencies that we see going across the spectrum. So along with supporting macro nutrition deficiencies, right, with midday meals and many other things that we even do, uh, you know, we have a huge feeding program that we spend on as part of our CSR globally and in India. I think there are the thrust of what we do to support the lower income people, but there is also all the work that we have to do to improve nutrition across the board. And I think if we can have more support, uh, more incentives for 
companies which are going nutrition out, right? Whether it's in the form of usage of millets, and they are a little more practical. So there are some of opportunities that have been offered. For example, you know, if you use more than 70% millets in a powder form, uh, some of those opportunities are very impractical, right? So if the uh, if the government can support with things that are more practical, because the point that Rohit made earlier, and anybody in the food industry will always tell you, uh, you can make a very healthy product, but if it doesn't taste good, it's, it's of no use, because nobody's going to consume it in the end, right? Anything which has to become a daily habit has to be something which people enjoy having every day. Um, and and it's, it's not just that you, it has to be tasty. You know, if people don't enjoy, a mom will tell you, if my kid doesn't have a smile on his face when he's having his breakfast, it's no use. Because I'd rather he has a full stomach with something he enjoys, rather than have to force him to have something every day. So that balance of people trying to bring in more nutrition, but not at an impractical level where, you know, you have to give up taste completely. That's the kind of support that the government should speak to industries about what's the levels and support us as we move in our journey to make our food more nutritious. Yeah, that's a few points Definitely. I want to make. Thank you. Sami? I think it's building on what <clears throat> Prashant is saying. I think uh, in life there has to be a balance. You know, you can't keep on living a healthy, but you can't just keep on eating only healthy, healthy whole day. I think. <laughs> there has to be fun and enjoyment in life also. You, know? you, have, to have, your, uh, you have to have your samosas and the gulab jamuns of the world also, I think. We as Indians actually have been brought up on that. It's, it's a culture for us, you know. Uh, celebrating is a part of a culture, eating good food is a part of a culture, but the right balance, the measured way, you know, it's not over, over indulgence in anything is bad, one way or the other, you know, only healthy, you know, we had this fads of some years back of Atkins diets and all, you know, uh, at the same time, just gobbling on fast food is just not the right way. So I think getting the right balance uh, is important, and this is incumbent upon the BS industry people to ensure that, and when I spoke earlier about snacking right, you know, we as industry have to drive, strive for the right balance uh, out there. <clears throat> we really believe that the prospects of the industry are extremely bright, uh, given the very, uh, given the significant opportunities uh, uh, on both on the consumption and on the penetration side. Just to give some data out there, is that less than one in two households in India have uh, bought a chocolate in the last one year. Less than one in two. So you can still imagine the amount of growth potential which this country has to offer. You know, uh, so I think. Uh, for those people, at least, you know, still moments of joy uh, and celebration are extremely important. How do you ensure that we participate in that? So I think as we go along the way, I think uh, the measured balance uh, is very, very important. And we are striving through a program on snacking right globally. That's a program in, and a purpose is to help people snacking right. And that we believe is the right way going forward and which will deliver dividends for many, many years to come for us uh, as a company and for India as a whole. Thank you. Ravat? Yeah, so there's a huge opportunity in India uh, to develop this segment and get it established at different level, like e-commerce platform by which we can provide the product to every person of India because still it is growing, it's not yet established well, since in rural areas there's no e-commerce facilities available as of now. And uh, second thing is innovative packaging by which we can uh, get into something by which we can formulate the products at different level to preserve their attributes and the quality. So these are the things which is very important. And uh, in the end, yes, uh, indulgence with the food is very important factor. If we will not liking the food, there is no meaning of having it. Whether it is containing what kind of ingredients, a different thing. So uh, there's a huge opportunity in this segment to grow more. And yes, this, se this segment is growing fast because of it is making the life easy for the peoples. And it is very convenient to have in short span of time, this is a busy lifestyle. Urbanization is a key factor driving this segment. Yeah. I think just to just last point. I think just to add yes, on. Yes, please. I think as a culture, I was talking about earlier. I think we are the food in this country is absolutely uh, at a level which no other country in the world can claim to. We can have probably a breakfast, different breakfast for 30 days without even repeating it, and that's the richness of a culture and a food, and that's why we are excited about this industry a lot. Thank you so much. I really, all of you agree with the, you enjoyed the whatever the panel members told. And we have a couple of minutes if you have any doubt. Only two questions. One, yes, please. Raj, give the phone. Mobile. This, uh, mic. So I think, first of all, thanks for the very interesting session. Uh, we got a lot of insights. I'm Puneet. I represent the Food Processing Sector Skill Council. So a bit of a government aspect Excellent. comes in there. I think it is a wicked problem, and I would agree with Rohit to an extent that that balance between nutrition and taste is something which is a trade-off. 
and and food can never become a pill or a medicine you know we we have food as part of you know our our uh, memories our ethics you know our growing up memories Quickly, and all sir. so Come. what i would only say is how can we look at this perception of ready to eat and ready to cook food which gets palatable to the generations i think the new generation is adopting it but there are a lot of misconceptions about it also in terms of ready to cook and ready to eat so you know how about the advocacy aspect or everything with the industry coming in together thank you sir anyone who want to I I'll take that question I I think what you're talking about is as you said how do you get that balance and uh, Rohit mentioned a couple of points and I would also add to that for example over the last few years uh, we have reduced the sugar content in our products yeah significantly now of course that's not a driver of consumption so we don't go about telling kids that hey I've reduced sugar because kids are not going to have it because you know the chocolates has less sugar but we've done that on our own and I know both the other organizations have done so as well so as an industry i think once the issue has been flagged you are finding the corporate responsibility kicking in and people taking the steps it is going to be taken in small steps because if you swing the other direction like i said earlier uh, you can you can remove all the sugar but then if the kid doesn't have it your purpose has been defeated anyway so that's a small example of how industry i think is already coming together uh, to address one of the issues you are referring to thank you prasant any one last question any one yeah quickly uh, we spoke about nuclear families over here but can we have have some light on nuclear farms also which and how are we going to address it in 2030 or 2050 where there there will be a we will be in need of adequate amount of the input to have all this uh, subsequently and where yeah. are we standing right now on this uh, any one or i'll well uh, <laughs> not specific to a nuclear farm but i think the con like we are driving the concept of uh, how do we basically increase the cocoa production in india i'm talking about uh, from from only's uh, example which we have uh, we import as a country almost 85% of our cocoa requirements uh, you know uh, but uh, we have, uh, cocoa is a great product to go as a multi crop uh, you know and it can add to the farmers income so it goes very well with the with the coconut plantation it goes very well with the palm plantation and government of india is putting a lot of emphasis on the palm plantations to reduce the import edible or dependency so we are now trying to work with the larger companies and with the government to see how we can get multi cropping in a big way so you know uh, and that will basically increase the uh, reduce the import dependence and significantly add to the farmers income we we are from a study we have figured out that it's almost at 30000 per acre you know to the farmers income so i think uh, while they are nuclear farms but the concept will be that only work with one farmer but try and work with the cohort of farmers so that you get the benefits of scale and size you know when we do it out there so that's an example from our company thank you uh, thank you so much anyone can addition okay. if you look at uh, you all of them touched one point is the consumer whatever the company they does for the profit and then or oh, everyone touched one point is consumer the consumer is like a 100 years back we have taken uh, food for nutrition energy 50 years back we started taking the food for the nutrition now we are taking a food for soul we want to enjoy what the samir is telling we want to enjoy the taking the food that's what you can see the weekends restaurants everywhere now is a part of our life enjoyment how we are going to mall and all food also be their part of that recently we took the study on how uh, the food habits is behaving with our brain we put the fmri is very clearly says when you enjoy the food you are taking your brain blood flow is increasing multifold that's very clearly shows that is not only the taste and other things both eye how you look into the food and how the smell or is come come to the nose then taste bugs give the signal to the brain all the things has added into that in india every 100 kilometers changes even for example simple sambar if you take it from kanyamri to kasmi or any product if you take it every 100 kilometers food habit is changing food preparation is changing our taste bugs are different so we need to play a different role in different places so single recipe can't match with everywhere but ready to eat ready to cook Uh, sigma has brought differently for example uh, chocolate they made it as a sweet as the chocolate now so this is possible over the year they pushed it that on but same chocolate is available in delhi bombay or melbourne or london the same the recipe is same that trend also is now coming earlier we can't get the idli dosa in delhi now it's everywhere available in south india if you go you get the chapati and all so we are changing because of digitalization uh, boundaries have go 
So we are getting all the product and everywhere. Hope this segment will go a little bit further down. Our traditional food product also reach out everywhere in the globe. Thank you so much for participating in this wonderful session. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much for your val valuable contribution. Uh, we would like to present a small memento from the Ministry of Food Processing. <laughs>